Well, good morning and welcome to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. We're gonna make a new bread today. So this is something I personally have never made before. And we are going to make Nutella brioche star bread. Isn't that lovely? So I thought, first I thought I was gonna make it for Thanksgiving, but I'm actually going to be cooking everything and schlepping it over to my mom's. My mom is 85 and just does not have the ability to cook anymore. And then also she doesn't like leaving the house. So um, we did this last year. It actually worked out pretty well. So I was gonna make this bread, long story, for Thanksgiving, but I've decided it's a bit fussy and I'm probably going to just make it for Christmas instead. All right, so let's get started. So I have here my KitchenAid mixer and the recipe calls for three quarter cup of warmed milk. So we've talked in previous videos about utilizing milk in yeast bread recipes, but by heating the milk, it deactivates or lessens the activity of any enzymes in the milk. So that is why it generally will say warm the milk. So to that, we are going to add regular active dry yeast. So not the rapid rise, not the bread machine. And we're gonna add two teaspoons. And even though the recipe calls to start putting in your dry ingredients first, that is not how I make bread. I'm sorry, I don't make it that way. So what I'm going to do is activate the yeast a little bit, if you will, by putting it into the warm milk and letting it kind of swim around in there for a little bit and um, hopefully help the bread to rise better. So if you've never heard of a brioche bread, it's a French bread. This will of course be a sweet bread. However, it's usually a bread that is rich with milk and egg. So that's where the term brioche comes from. It is always super, super cold in my house. I try to keep my heat at 62 during the day, 60 at night. I'm living large today, y'all. I actually turned it up to 66 because poor little Frankie, my kitty cat, if you've not been on my channel for very long, He's laying on the register and he meows every time I walk past because it's cold in here. So when the cat is complaining and I can't very well put a sweater on him, I probably need to turn up the heat. All right, so we've let that hang out for just a minute. To that, I am going to add a pinch of salt. So like literally what you can hold between two fingers and that's all I'm gonna add. You want to then add two tablespoons of unsalted butter melted. I don't have unsalted butter, so it was a little scant on my salt for that reason. So hang on, I'm going to melt my butter. I forgot to do that. Cooking on YouTube. All right, so hang tight. All right, so we're gonna add our two tablespoons of melted butter. So I'll tell y'all a little funny story. The reason I'm a little bit discombobulated, my beloved 17 year old microwave, this morning, I, I swear I had ADD because I was trying to find this recipe, which I knew I had printed off. And I got in the cabinet above the microwave and it was really messy. So then I decided to clean it out and I got a little sidetracked because I was like, ooh, the top of the microwave where the vent is up here is like greasy and so, I took it apart and took the grate out and took the, the vent filter out and, you know, cleaned it all up. So um, I didn't get the vent cover in there right. So when I was trying to do take number one and warm things, the entire top of the microwave fell off. <clears throat> so we have it put back together. We're back on track. So to this, we are going to add two egg yolks. So when you separate your egg, save your white because we're going to use this when we get ready to bake the bread. So plop in our two egg yolks. And then I'm gonna just like stir this a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it smells so good and it smells so yeasty. So while that's kind of mixing up for just a minute, I wanted to share my apron with you all. So I am wearing a Wolf and Stang Aesthetics apron, which I purchased from my good bestie Jasper. And Jasper is actually the owner of this company. She's a fabulous makeup artist, obviously. I could use a little help from my girl, but uh, she sells Lime Life Cosmetics. So I will drop a link in the description box to her website. Lime Life is actually professional cosmetics. So it's not your drugstore variety cosmetic. I'm not a heavy, heavy makeup wearer, but I have been promised a makeover. <laughs> and I'm gonna hold her to that because I need it. Alrighty. So we've added so far our yeast, our salt, our milk, our egg yolks, and our butter. So the next thing I'm gonna add is one third cup of white sugar. So I'm gonna swing you down because I wanna show you my canisters. So these giant canisters are actually from Walmart, Anchor Hawking. The two gallons are approximately $13.97. And I had purchased one, and what happened was, that's all they had the day that I was there. I wanted more of them because it will hold up to 10 pounds of flour, sugar, whatever you're gonna put in there. And I'm just adding my one third cup of sugar. Well, when I went back to Walmart, they did not have it. So I looked at the Walmart in the town my mother lives in thinking, well, I'll just get it from there. Well, they didn't have it there either. So I went out on Amazon, this totally cracked me up, to look for these. And there was one seller, and I think they're called Heritage Canisters. One two gallon canister was $160. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So then I went to the Anchor Hawking website and in the upper 60s, close to 70, you could get a set of three, which is not what, at all what I needed. So I happened to be in Walmart when I did my monthly shopping a week or so ago and they had one and I was like totally snatching that bad boy up and super happy about it. Okay, so the last ingredient that we're going to add before we start kneading is three and a half cups of bread flour. So, let's do that. I'm just, I have it on like one. I don't want to floof bread flour everywhere. I'm pretty good at that. and three and I'm going to tell you I watched a few YouTube videos on people making this before I attempted it because sometimes I learn by watching as well as reading so and here's our third and depending on the temperature of your house the humidity in your house your bread can be a little bit different every time so if your bread doesn't want to come together, it's not making that ball that leaves the edges of the bowl and starts cleaning it off. Ah, lovely flour. Um, you may need to add a little bit more flour. So I'm going to let this incorporate and I will bring you back to show you what our dough ball looks like and talk about how long you should knead it. All right, so as you can see here, our dough has come together in a nice ball. So we're going to actually let this knead for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to set my timer. Remember, you should not, if you're using the dough hook, don't set your KitchenAid above a level two. So I will bring you back when we're finished kneading. All right, well, our dough has finished kneading. You can see it's a very springy dough when you push it. I hope you can see that. It bounces back fairly quickly. So I just shaped this into a ball. I did rinse out my mixer bowl, put a little bit of vegetable oil, and I am just going to coat the entire ball. Use my hands a little bit here because we want to let this rise for about two hours or until doubled in size. So uh, the oil enables it not to 
dry out, so that's an important step. I would use vegetable oil. I'm using corn oil versus olive oil since this is a sweet bread. And then I've just dampened a um, linen type dish towel, flour sack towel. You could also use plastic wrap and then it's gonna go into my oven with the light on because it's so cold in my house to rise for the next two hours. And I'll bring you back to show you when it's doubled in size. Welcome back. It's been just right at two hours. And depending on the video that you watch, you'll see anywhere from two to two and a half hours. I did have mine in my oven with the light on, so I think that probably helped. But look how big. So that is one big happy loaf of bread. So fingers crossed here. So the first thing that you wanna do, my hands are clean, I have disinfected the counter, is you want to punch down your dough. So basically what you're doing here is letting some of that air out. So we'll start there. And then you want to turn it out onto a well-floured surface. Now I am going to use bread flour because I think it is less likely to toughen your bread than if you use all-purpose flour. So let's turn this out. And I can tell you the bread, honestly, feels very different than it did. Uh, when I first put it in there, I was a little bit worried about it because it felt almost like a bit tough. It does seem to be a really glutinous bread. And as I've watched the videos of people trying to roll this out, it is like a whole thing. So probably what I will do here is show you the basics. And then with the magic of videoing, I will most likely uh, turn off the camera, get everything ready, and then bring you back for the critical parts. So uh, I can see why people struggle, definitely. Let's get this ring off. So some of you have asked, oh, y'all are so observant, I tell you. Why, if I'm not married, do I wear a wedding ring? So a little story behind that ring. That was actually a Christmas gift to my mother from my dad. And he and I picked it out together when I was a teenager. So my mom gave it to me because she doesn't really wear anything but her wedding ring anymore. My dad's been gone 10 years. So anyway, so now that we've got it kind of flattened out here, I'm just gonna roll it up. So I've got like a jelly roll. And I'm doing that, and I want it to kind of be even so that I can divide this dough into four sections. So I have a bench cutter, and I'm gonna just guesstimate half. And you can see, even with a sharp bench cutter, this is a little bit of a more elastic, uh, challenging dough, so yeah. I Guess I can't divide something in half today. <laughs> so we'll put that piece with that piece and we'll cut the last two and a half. Now, for the recipe that I shared, which is the actual Nutella recipe, the recommendation is to roll it out into an eight inch circle. So I've seen many videos and some of them did 10 inches but I'm actually going to stick with the Nutella recipe because I'm not sure that I could roll it out that thin. So I'm going to fight with this dough <laughs> and um, try to get it rolled out. And then I will bring you back when I have a big enough um, circle and show you what we do next. All right. Well, this is what I want to tell you about making this bread. It is not, like if you've never made bread before, I would not even attempt it. The bread is extremely elastic and you, it works the best if you just keep turning, turning, turning it. What I'm doing now is I'm just rolling it up on a rolling pin. I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to 
put it on a cookie sheet that is covered in parchment paper. I am not going to cut this to size until I have all four layers rolled out. So in between each layer, what we want to do is take some Nutella. I bought the Walmart brand because it was like a dollar fifty cheaper a jar, and I'm sure it tastes just fine. It's probably the same thing actually, but um, it does suggest that you heat it. And given the temperature in my house, I am going to pop this in the microwave. And note, it has a metal inner liner, so don't forget to take that off before you put it in the microwave. So please excuse my floured front. I am going to put this in the microwave, stir it, spread some Nutella, work on the next layer, and I'll bring you back. All right, guys, so I have two layers of my brioche on here with a layer of Nutella in between. What I can tell you is once I opened it and stirred it, my Nutella did not need to be melted. Um, you know, I think you're just going to have to judge since this is the Walmart brand and not the true Nutella brand. Perhaps yours may be uh, in need of some melting. So you just want to be able to spread it easily. And here's what I can tell you about rolling out the dough. There was a point I was ready to chuck it in the garbage can. But really, it just takes a lot of slow, steady pressure, lots and lots of patience, and just take your time. Keep turning your dough, roll it from different angles, and it will eventually comply. But it is not a dough like anything you would think of being a bread. And you'll notice here, I'm using an offset spatula, which is probably a little large for the job, but this is the only one I have. I'm not going clear to the edge because we are going to cut away after we lay our circle down. So as you're laying out your bread, rolling out your bread, your goal is to make sure that your piece is big enough to accommodate what you're going to be cutting around to make the circle. So I'm gonna keep on. I will bring you back at the end when we're ready to cut our circle. Okay, <laughs> we are back and I did it. So what I have are the four layers of our brioche dough and in between each layer, I put the Nutella. So the next thing we need to do is take your eight inch plate, pie pan, whatever it is. <laughs> Somehow I have Nutella on mine. Um, and lay down and you want to try to capture all the edges as best you can. I'm going to push down a little bit and then taking a sharp knife you want to trim to that eight inch circle. What I did laugh at a little bit is some of the videos I watched folks discarded, as in threw away, the part they were cutting away. And I can tell you, I'm not throwing it away. I am going to actually take a little piece of parchment paper, grab a cookie sheet, <clears throat> And I'm saving it because I thought it will make good snacking material. So, I actually have some things to do tomorrow for my mother, bless her heart. And she loves chocolate. You know, I used to fuss at her about her diet because, you know, we want our parents to be healthy and my mom has always been extremely finicky. Ta-da, the round circle. And also, um, she doesn't drink cow's milk. She doesn't eat seafood. She doesn't like a lot of things. So, you know, she's outlived so many family members who ate healthy, 
who had a healthier lifestyle, I decided I'm just going to like let that go. So she eats chocolate every single morning before she has breakfast. So maybe that's the secret to a long life. I'm not a huge chocolate fan. Okay, so now you want to take a drinking glass or something around and you want to put it about in the circle, the center of the circle. So, yeah, I'm going to measure and try to get as close as I can to the circle. And I'm just going to push down a little bit because I want that to stay in place. Now we start making our cuts. So taking again the sharp knife, you want to make a cut at three o'clock, 12 o'clock, nine o'clock and six o'clock. And I know I said those out of order, but four cuts. Then for each of those four pie shaped wedges, you want to cut those in half. And again, we're just cutting to the center where the glass edge is because we don't want to cut clear up to the middle and I think it's easier honestly to go from the glass out than it is from from the outside in and it helps to turn your tray <laughs> only takes me to like the last cut to figure that out right okay so now you have eight but we're going to make 16 so for each of those little wedges that you just did we're going to cut those in half again so super like this is the easiest part of the whole thing that and looking the nutella spatula i think oh goodness so what i can already tell you is i would not make this because I think it will be best fresh baked rather than pre-baked the day before. I would not make this for a major holiday dinner where you have a lot going on, like you have to watch the turkey or, you know, cook a lot of things. I would not do that. It's It just requires a lot of attention. It's not so much that it's actually even that hard. It was a little troubling trying to get it to roll out. That could be partly me and my hands. I'm not real sure. So this is what we have. We have like a little flower. So let me adjust you better. And what we're going to do, first of all, you do wanna make sure you're cut all the way through. So you're gonna take two of your little sixteenths and we're gonna twist them. And that's how you make the points of the star. So you're gonna twist two times away and then push the ends together. So I'm going to say one, two, wow, is this ever goopy. And push those ends together like a point. I think I only twisted that one one. And I can already tell you, you're gonna have to wash your hands a lot. <laughs> okay. And I tried not to overload on the Nutella. Some of the videos I watched, people really struggled if they had a lot of Nutella. So one, two, bring your ends together and to a point. I'm like so unhappy with this one. Probably should have left that alone. But that's okay because we'll call it a snowflake and we know snowflakes aren't perfect. So I'm going to continue so you don't have to watch me washing my hands a thousand times in between. And I will bring you back at the end to show you what we can make. Right, so our Nutella star bread, watch me dump this on the floor, uh, is formed. Now the next thing you need to do is once again, Cover it with a damp cloth. And thankfully, this is a large cloth, so I can cover both. And then we are going to wait 
20 minutes for the second rise, and then I will bring you back and show you the final step before baking. Stay tuned. Well, our 20 minutes have passed, and um, I was reviewing the segments of the video, so I have two things to tell you. One is I will drop the link to the Nutella Starbread recipe in the description box. I noticed when I was speaking, I said three and a half cups of flour, then I put in three and a third, and three and a third is correct, so that you don't have to remember all that. I'll just drop the link and you can go out and get a printable copy for yourself. <laughs> the second thing, I called my girlfriend's business Wolf and Stang, and it's Wolf and Stag. So my apologies, girl. I didn't even realize I said it until I went back to look. Okay, so we got the housekeeping out of the way. So you can tell that in 20 minutes, we definitely got some rise, even on our pieces, which I think are gonna have to be watched pretty closely because they're thin at the edge, but that's okay. So the next thing you want to do, hopefully you still have your egg whites that I mentioned at the beginning to keep. So I'm just gonna beat these up a little bit with a fork. So today, I, I did notice as well, I'll beat and talk at the same time. Um, I forgot to mention that today is actually real Halloween. So that's why the crazy outfit and the um, spooky skull leggings and the Halloween socks. So Halloween is one of my most favorite holidays. So I just thought, even though I'm at home today, I'm going to poof it up and wear some of my Halloween Lulero. All right. So, I have here a pastry brush, and what I am going to do is just coat all of my star bread. That one point just does not satisfy me. <laughs> but again, um, you know, I think this is a learning curve, and it will probably get easier. I was completely shocked at how difficult it was to roll out. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, and I, I never want to make this like, oh, it's all about me and my health. But, you know, one of the reasons that I do so much homemade cooking and, and try to avoid using a lot of additives and preservatives is because I have some immune system issues, uh, namely lupus, and then also I have psoriatic arthritis. So many people that have psoriatic arthritis start out with skin psoriasis, which I have had my entire life, and it progresses um, into a, a, almost like a rheumatoid type arthritis. So, <laughs> oh goodness. I only have to take um, medication once a day and I couldn't remember last night if I took it or I didn't, which is really sad because I only take two things and um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go to a pill monitor so I'll know whether or not I took it. <sighs> Just don't get old, I guess, is the, the real solution. But at any rate, I don't think I took it just based on how I'm feeling today. So I take an anti-inflammatory that's prescription, you know, kind of like prescription Motrin. So I was having a little bit more problem with um, hand and wrist pain than I normally would. So that may be why I felt that it was a little more difficult. But yeah, since we had plenty of egg white, I decided to do this. This is kind of an interesting view. You can see all the layers of yumminess. So I have my oven preheating and the recipe says, uh, bake 350 for about 20 minutes. Based on the videos I watched, they said watch it closely. Kind of depends on how thinly you rolled it out, what size plate you used to cut it. So um, I'm thinking it's going to take a full 20, just judging by the thickness of the bread. But I'm going to keep an eye on it at 15 onward. And I will bring you back at the end to show you our finished star slash snowflake Nutella brioche bread. All right, well, final segment. I am so thrilled. It was actually worth all of the um, challenge getting it rolled out. Look how beautiful. I'll try to swing you down. 
There we go. Is that not lovely? And the other thing I wanted to share with you is look at all of the excess I cut away that people did not bother to second rise or bake. So I would really encourage you to not waste that part that you're cutting away. I'm going to try to cut it into like some pretty shapes, like maybe pie shape wedges and share some with my neighbors. I'll be taking some to my mom tomorrow as well. So I hope you all had a safe and fun Halloween, and I hope that you are healthy and well and blessed. Have a lovely rest of your day.